I'm coming to you today with a very important question. How do you put video data to use? You already know that data can be the key to unlocking additional insights, efficiencies, and even revenue for your business. But it can be really easy to let data take a back seat and for you to become a data hoarder. In other words, someone who did the hard work to collect the data, but then it just sits there collecting dust in boxes, only really good for visualization as a stock photo in a keynote PowerPoint, in a keynote, which that's not good at all. It's sitting there on the sidelines begging to be put in the game like a second string quarterback begging the coach. And the longer that you wait, the more opportunity that you're missing out. When data goes unused, it's pointless. So how can we give your video data meaning? And what kind of insights can you pull out of it? In this talk, I'm gonna give you five examples of creative ways that you can put your video data to use that can lead to actionable insights for your team. But first, let's quickly discuss what video data looks like. You might be used to seeing video data on something like a YouTube video. This is my favorite YouTube video. It's got many views. Half of them are probably me. But you can see the popularity of the content that's associated here. Or on a Twitch stream, you get a sense of how many live viewers there are in any given stream. Turtles and Chill, relatively popular. But there's so much more available to you than just the number of views and viewers for any given piece of content. And it all starts with monitoring your video. Luckily, the folks here at Mugs have made that super simple to do with over 25 different SDKs that com are compatible with your player. So it's a good chance that your use cases cover. Once you have this monitoring set up, you'll start getting instant clues into the quality of experience that your viewers are having and the quality of the content that you're producing. This is measuring the rebuffering, startup time, and video quality for every single stream that's going through your system. You'll also be able to uncover more than 40 different dimensions and add your own custom dim dimensions as well, including, let's say for example, you want to see what mailing campaign a specific view started at, or uh, is this viewer on one of our paid plans? If so, which one? Maybe you wanna know what is their favorite taco joint or what's their preferred spice level? Probably shouldn't have those taco joints there. You can then use these dimensions to isolate and spot differences across video formats, time zones, devices, and geographies. And you can use that information to build these custom dashboards like the ones that we've dreamed up here. But even this is just the beginning. And I apologize to the Mux data team that's worked tirelessly to create those dashboards. The real power of Mux data shines when you start to access the Mux data APIs to build your own custom solutions. So let's take a look at those five ideas for putting the data to use. This first one was inspired by a job that I had maybe about a decade ago in the West Loop of Chicago, which as you can imagine, that was the last real job that I had. So the interview at Mux was a little awkward. But the first, this, this idea was also written about in a blog post. The idea here is to generate videos programmatically on demand based on the data that you have available to you. What we wanted to do with this office was to show interesting things on TV screens that were located all around the office and kind of talk about creative projects that we were working on and inspire each other, have some organic conversations and see what kind of creativity evolved out of it. So imagine a video like this with your Mux data playing on TV screens all around your office and what that might inspire within your team members. Maybe it's some kind of new innovation or changes that occur within your products. And you will get to be the answer to the question, who made that? Which, if we're doing our job here at Mux, it's to make you look good in front of your boss. So this was built using a tool called Remotion, which makes it really easy for you to incorporate programmatic videos and, and build them on demand. And we have a blog post available that allows you to just download the code to generate this exact video using your live Mux data. Uh, so I encourage you to check that out. Moving on to number two here. Create custom dashboards for user-facing analytics. So if you run a SaaS application, you know that custom dashboards are no longer a, a, just an, a nicety. 
in your product. It's, it's a requirement. And your users are expecting that. So by adding Mux data dashboards and analytics into your dashboard, it's a huge value add for your product. And the, the way we access this is to actually switch it on its head. And we don't make API requests. Rather, we'll use Mux data streaming and push that data to you in real time as soon as we have access to it, just like Nitty and Philip were describing. You can then take that data and store it somewhere long-term for further computation and assessment. Let us do the heavy lifting, and we'll let you know as soon as we have it on demand. Number three, enhance application UIs with real-time data points. There's something magical about knowing that there are people out there watching your video content right now. And it taps into this cohort mentality or this idea that the, these viewers are part of the action. They're part of the experience. They make, this makes your viewers feel like they're not alone, that they're in this together. It's the same sensation of watching a, a ball game on TV, knowing that it's happening right downtown. And this can also make your team feel like that their hard work is paying off. If you can show them, look how many people are watching our videos right now. It makes people feel like the content is actually resonating and connecting with the audience. So Mux Data makes this really easy to access with a single API call that's signed with a JWT. And we can see here we have access to the views and the viewers that are uh, watching any given piece of content at a specific time. Number four here is an interesting one about revising video content based on your data. So what you may or may not know is that when a viewer is interacting with your video player, there's all kinds of events that are being fired off. For example, is the video playing? Has the, users, has the viewer seat? Uh, is they, did they go full screen? Is there any pausing events or interactivity with the player in general? And you can use this information to your advantage. As we can see here in this example video, the viewer is skipping ahead in front of Ed's face. Why would we be doing that? Because it's certainly not because he's not handsome. So what else could we assume here? If maybe if it happens you know, once or twice, it's an anomaly, but if it happens more, it, it could be a trend. So could there be somewhere in this video that we could actually improve uh, the, the script? Are we falling short somewhere? Could we take this piece of content back to the drawing board rework the script, maybe get to the content sooner, the point of the video sooner, because you know that the better your content is, the better it's going to connect with your audience and give you better retention. You could also, we have customer that is in the educational space that looks at the pauses of a specific video and helps them to understand, did we move too fast through this specific topic? Or maybe we weren't clear enough. Maybe we need to go into more detail here. Um, another way that you can look at, at revising your video content or understanding the traction of your video content is through view heat maps and seeing what's the completion rate or how far has somebody made it through a specific video. Um, at the same time, understanding where maybe that viewer has dropped off of a specific video. And that can give you an indication as to where your content is resonating and connecting. Again, you can use the Mux data streams to be able to perform some calculations on your end and make some assessments about how your content is performing. And last year, this one was brought to my attention by John Rygart, who reminded me that we get information with Mux data for every single stream that goes through your system. And it's possible to correlate that stream data with other data that you have inside of your business. And you can identify the threshold at which point the overall experience, the viewing experience, might correlate with the, uh, in this example, subscriber churn rate. So let's say we have a specific view stream that's associated with one of our viewers, and we can understand, in general, if this overall experience score drops below, I don't know, 80, that it might have an impact on their ability or their desire to stick around. So we can then be proactive about performing win-back campaigns and prioritizing development work to improve the experience based on their environment. You can also generally use this information to improve forecasting of your churn rates and understand 
we need to do a better job with our delivery and our playback environments in order to reduce that, that uh, churn rate. Lastly, you can understand when you may have hit good enough velocity. In other words, once you've reached an experience score of, I don't know, 88 here in this example, maybe that is actually well enough that it doesn't have an impact on your churn rate where you can pull back some of your dedicated development resources and push them into a, another area that you're looking to improve. But even with these five examples, we're still only scratching the surface. And the truth is, this is where it gets confusing for everybody. There's no limit as to how you can apply your data. You can make hiring decisions, make budgeting decisions. You can make roadmap or prioritization decisions, ops decisions. Maybe you throw a company party if you hit a certain metric. Maybe you give your community engineers a really nice bonus if you hit a certain metric. You are the coach in this situation. You get to decide what assets you have available to you and make the best decisions that will have the impact on your business, the best impact on your business. Be the coach that I had when I played football. It's true. The coach that, remember that second string quarterback I was talking about? The coach that looked that second string quarterback in the eyes and said, I, I see some value here. That knew that some changes that needed to be made and that the only way to turn the season around was to put that quarterback in. And I'll never forget what that, court, what that coach said to the second string quarterback leaned in and he said, it's your turn, son. Go get him. Tell Dave that he needs to get off the field. And we won that game. And I hung up my cleats for good that night. But the point here is, your data can have just as wondrous of an impact as the second string backup quarterback did on that football team. What are you missing out on? It starts with aggregation. So start monitoring your videos today so you can make decisions on the data that you get tomorrow. Thanks for listening. And up next, we've got Steve Lyons, Director of Product Management, to help you make the most of your data.